A queue is an abstract data type, where the first item into the list is the first item out of the list. This means it can be implemented in many ways. In C Sharp, the queue is implemented as a circular array. This is an example of a queue being implemented by a circular array. Here we have a private int capacity to store the size of our array. Here we have a privately set variable count to keep track of the number of items in the array. Here we have an object array called queue array to store the items in our queue. Here we have a reference to the head of our queue. Here we have a reference to the tail of our queue, which are both set to negative one initially. Here's our constructor for the queue, which passes in a capacity that determines the size of the internal array of the queue. Here we have our first basic method, nq. To add an item to the queue, it must be added at the end or tail of the queue. So we must increment the pointer of the tail when we add an item to the queue. nq is big O of 1 because we were adding the item at our reference for tail. Before we add an item to our queue, we must check if the queue is full or the internal array is full. So if the head is 0 and the tail is at the end of the array, then we know that we have a full list. Also, if tail has looped around to the beginning of the array again and head is one after tail, then we know we have a full list. If we have a full list, we could do a multiple of things. We could throw an exception, we could not allow another item on the list, or we could resize the internal array. We will take a look at that after we take a look at the case where our array is not full. So now that we've determined that the array is not full, we must determine the current position of our tail. If head and tail are equal to negative one, then we are dealing with a new list, and we must set head and tail to zero. We can do this by incrementing head and incrementing tail, and then we simply set our object at position zero. If our tail is equal to the capacity minus one, AKA the end of our array, and we still have available space, then we can loop the tail around to the beginning of the array, and so we will set tail's position to zero, and then we would set our object to position zero of our queue array. Otherwise, the normal circumstance is we would increment the tail of the array, and then we would set the object to the position where the tail is currently on our array. After we add an object to our queue array, we must increment the count. Now let's look at DQ. DQ removes and returns the object at the beginning of the queue. Remember, we are dealing with an abstract data type, so we don't need to physically remove the object from the array. We just need to logically remove it. Also, DQ is big O of 1, because we will be removing the item from the pointer to the head. If head is equal to negative 1, then our array is empty, and so our queue is empty and we will throw an exception that the queue is empty, we cannot remove an item from this queue. Otherwise, we get a reference to the object at the current position of head. If head is equal to tail, then we are removing the last item from this array slash queue. Thus, we must reset our indexes to negative one for the head and negative one for the tail. If the head is at the end of the array, aka capacity minus one, and there's still items to be removed from the array, we must loop around to the beginning of the array again. So we set head equal to zero. Otherwise, under normal circumstances, when we are dequeuing an item from the array, we must increment the head by one. Since we are removing an item from our array, we will decrement the count by one, and then we will return the reference to the object to the user. The last key method of the queue is the peak method. The peak method simply returns the object at the beginning of the queue without removing that object. Peak is also big O of one since we're getting the object at our reference to head. If the head is less than zero, then the array is empty. And so the queue is empty and we throw an exception that the queue is empty. Otherwise, we simply return the object that is at the position of the head in our queue array. In C Sharp, it's helpful to use the for each loop. We can do this by implementing ienumerable. To do this, we implement ienumerable.getEnumerator, which returns our method getEnumerator. Here's our method getEnumerator. First, we check if the list is empty by seeing if head is equal to negative 1. If head is equal to negative 1, we simply return 
Otherwise, we must check the position of the head relative to the tail. Under normal circumstances, when the tail is greater than or equal to the head, we can simply loop from the head to the tail. So here's a for loop that goes from the head pointer to the tail pointer of the array and yields the return of the object at said index. Otherwise, if the tail is not greater than or equal to the head, then the tail has looped around. So we first must get all objects from the head to the end of our array by going from i is equal to head to the capacity of the array. And since the tail has looped around, we must go to the start of the array, so i equal to zero, up to the new position of the tail. Now that we know the three basic methods of a queue and how to use for each on a queue, let's take a look at what we can do when our queue is full. So now let's look at enqueuing another object after our array is full. When our array is full, we create a temporary array and set it equal to the length of the current array plus one. To add the objects to the temporary array, we simply go through the same process as we did for printing the objects out to the screen. Here we create an integer variable j and set it equal to zero to reference the beginning of our new array. When the tail is greater than or equal to the head, we are in the normal scenario. We simply loop from the head to the tail. While looping from the head to the tail, we take our position i of our loop, get our object from our current q array, and then we set it equal to the j position in our temporary array, which is starting at zero and then we increment j to get to the next position of the temporary array as we go through our loop from head to tail. Otherwise, if the tail has looped around, we must first loop from the head of the array to the end of the array, or the capacity of the array, and then we simply set our objects at the i position in the q array equal to the temporary at the j positions, which starts at zero. After we get the items from the head to the end of the array, then we must loop around to the start of the array, and simply we take i equal to zero, so we go to from zero to the current position of the tail of the array. As we loop through, we take our q array at our current index of i, and then we set it to our current index of j on our temporary array, and then we increment j. After the temporary array has all the original objects of our original queue array, then we can set our queue array equal to the temporary array. Head will be reset to zero, and tail will be set to the new open slot, or the last position of the current array. Then we set our new last position, our new tail in our queue array, equal to the object that was just inserted. Then we can increment our reference to the capacity of the array, and down below we can increment the count of the array. So let's try it out. Here we have a queue with an array initialized with a size of four. As you can see, our initial count of our queue is zero. Then we enqueue items one through four, then dequeue two items, and then we enqueue items five through eight. As you can see, since we added eight items to our array and removed two, we have a count of six items in our queue. As we use our for each loop on our queue, we see that we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just as expected as we dequeued two items from our queue. And that would be one and two. If we use the peak method, you can see that we return the number three, which is at the head of the list, but the list is not altered. If we use the count of the queue to do a for loop over the queue, then we will see we will receive the items in the same order that we inserted them to the queue. As you can see, we dequeued three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Our count is zero after our DQ. And that is about it for the implementation of a queue with a circular array in C-sharp.